Hey guys, Moylet here, and welcome to the Dropping Clinic. We are playing Train Bomb Survival something or nothing, and let's get into this. Right then, um... Ah! Wait, am I controlling one of these? Whoa. Where are we? Not really sure. What's going on? Oh, we're shooting something. How do you, how do you oh, aim? Oh. It's... I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So, what, the main purpose of this segment is to give you guys advice on life's problems. Disclaimer, we don't know what we're talking about. That we, we don't know how to give no, advice. we don't. So if you listen, it's your fault. If you die, it's your fault. Um, we will not accept any responsibility. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start off with our first question, which is, how do I get rid of mild deep sea water fear? Well, as we all know, there's a, there's a lot to fear in the sea. There's sharks, there's... There's penguins, there's like all sorts of stuff. Seaweed. Nemo, Nemo. Dory, yep. All of them, all of them. All terribly frightening. I mean, they, those ones can talk. I mean, yeah. talking fish? That is, What's going that is on? Kind of weird. So, um, obviously, to overcome your fear, you just need to go down as deep as you can. I, I know you only have a mild fear, so you should be able to do this. Just get on your scuba gear, go down to the, the bottom of the ocean. Right. Bring out your fist. Find a shark. Biggest shark you can. Punch it in the face. <laughs> right, right in the nose. Right in the nose. Okay? Yep. Right in the nozzle. The no, 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 nozzle. No. <laughs> yep, that works. The nose. The nails. Yes, punch it in the nose. So punch it in the nose. And then... And then you will no longer be scared of... of anything in the sea because you can beat up sharks and if you die by punching a shark it doesn't matter you're dead you won't be scared anymore will you right exactly so you're fine really good good kind of conquered your fears there or you're dead so uh, let us know how that goes I think that's a win win if you die then obviously don't let us know how it goes <laughs> and we hope to hear back from you soon sounds good good Alright, our next question is how many potatoes can a potato potate if a potato can potate potatoes hmm a question mm. that has plagued mankind for centuries. Well, well, I am closest. I, I am closest to Ireland, so um, obviously I remember the Great Potato Famine uh, a little while ago. Right. But, um, and they obviously needed a lot of potatoes to potato other potatoes then. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have an extensive knowledge of it. So I might have to leave this one to you guys a little bit well, with your superior mathematical knowledge. Okay, well, um, an average potato weighs, on average, at least one to two pounds. And yes. the length of it is anywhere from six to eight inches with a three inch diameter. Mm. And if the potato is a good potato, like it's a hard working, good natured potato, then odds good, are- a good, work, a good work ethic, you mean? Right, good work ethic. Um, of course, okay. the work ethic of the potato has a direct influence on how many potatoes it can potate. So if we triangulate yes. the hypotenuse of the collateral um, damage that the potato could potate, exactly. then it would only make sense for us to say that the potato could potate at least one potato per potation unit. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's just a bunch of different variables, but on average, I would estimate that the pH level of uh, the dirt that the potato will be potating in is approximately 7, so I yeah. would say at least 14.25 potatoes per potation unit. Yes, I, I agree. That sounds reasonable. Okay. Um, it's sound reasoning. Yes. Uh, I follow the logic all the way through there. Yeah, I'm not going um, to argue that. Good. No. No, so hopefully that answered your question. Let us know if you have any more potato questions because um, obviously we have the potato expertise to answer them. Exactly. Right, and our next question is, where is the best place to cry in public? Hmm. Well, it depends where you are, really. I, I do believe I mean, this person is located in New York City. Well, as we know, New York City is famous for the Big Apple, situated in the center of the city. Yes. Um, which famously uh, never goes out of date. Right. It never browns up. It's fine. It's a renewable resource. So, um, you, you appear to be just sleeping down here when we're trying to play this level. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So, come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't worry, I I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, Are we all supposed to be playing? Because there's only one HUD thing. I was about to say, why do I have a special little... Oh, now I have it! Yay! <laughs> R2 We're says, sharing. aim big paint bomb. Whoa. So apparently you have a big paint bomb. Nice. Okay. So, anyway, what, where were we? Oh, yeah. Talking. So about obviously, the apple, uh, the core of the apple, is the best place to cry because um, it will never, um, it will never decompose. So you should be safe forever. Right. And it's that a very thing private was place. a nutter. What the hell just attacked us? It's like a some crazy thing. Like it's dog on fire. We got it. We got it right. Is got he it. from? Run! No, run! Run! Is he from Miami? He, he's possibly from Miami. Um, but yes, so cry in the core of the apple. Um, if I don't know if you're any anywhere else in the world, say say London, you may want to uh, take a high place. Hmm. You may want to go to a high place. Um, such as maybe the London Eye. Right. Mm. Um, but obviously that will continue rotating if you leave. Um, wow, this level's gone a bit glitchy. Yes. Kill these guys! Kill yeah. them! I can't see anything. <laughs> okay, there we go. Right. Um, these guys don't appear to want to attack me, really. So. Oh. oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, no. Um, so if you're in London, right, you want to get up to the top of the London Eye, whip out your sniper rifle, Kill the guy that's controlling it, as he's obviously um, going to keep it rotating if you don't. Um, so then you'll be at the top forever until like the SWAT guys come, but you should be in peace until that time. So uh, let us know how that works out for you. Um, hopefully you don't get arrested like too much, because I uh, don't know, it kind of a bit of a bummer. Yeah. Always. But um, let us know how it works out for you. Obviously, the Queen has a lot of spare rooms if you want to head over to her house for a bit of a bit of a, a lonely cry. Right. Um, I don't know. Any, anywhere else in America you guys think of um, crying? Uh, I think Minnesota is Minnesota. is pretty yeah. good to cry. Um, yeah. It, it's a small soda, and everybody is okay. You know, disappointed when they get a small soda, not a large soda. So Obviously, you, you want to go for the, the max soda. Right, right. You know, and apparently in New York City, they just outlawed sodas bigger than 16 ounces. Oh, so maybe yeah. New York is not the best place to go cry. Well, it is, because now you have many sodas in New York City. Oh, um, that's perfect. So, either way, yeah. You can so, cry. New York City is the best place in the world to cry. Okay, then. So, that's sorted. Yes. Hopefully, that has answered your question, Anonymous. And... Uh, let's move on to the next question, I guess. Okay, so we have another one here from? Um, from Marina. I love blue more than you. Um, let's see. What's the safest, climbing up a tall tree or stepping on a Lego? Oh, definitely, definitely climbing up a tall tree. The tree, definitely. Tree. Have you ever stood on a Lego? Yes. It is the most painful experience a man can possibly imagine. Yep. There's Women, forget childhood, <laughs> stand on the Lego, tell us your pain then. And the worst thing is to step on the Lego and then stub your toe immediately afterwards. Have you ever stood on a plug? Uh, an upturned plug? Like an electrical plug. Yeah. But your electrical uh, the, the plugs different. look yes. different. Ours, yeah. ours are we, we have three pins. We have three pins to go into up there. Wow. Yeah. We have two. <laughs> and, they're all, and they're bigger than your miniature stupid pins. <laughs> Do you guys, do they have more voltage than us? I can't remember. I, I don't know. Do you guys have more voltage? Yes. Oh. Yes. It's, yes. It, we have one so thing You guys are... Our things, our things will charge really slowly out there. Mm. So we can charge up an iPad in like, what, an hour here? Oh, out there and take like a year to charge up an iPad to pull back. Yeah, it does only cost you $1.65 to do it. Yeah. yeah. So we are pretty cheap. So, what was the question again? Ah, stepping on a Lego. I say that climbing up a tall tree is way safer. Yeah. Yes, definitely. The tall tree is very safe. Because, think about it, you fall out of a tall tree and you're pretty much dead on the spot. Right. But if you step on a Lego, you have to live with that for the rest of your life. That's that's very true. So, yeah. go climb you a tall tree, people. Go climb tall trees. Um, just be as dangerous as you want, as long as you're not going to step on a Lego. Yes. Lego. If you take anything away from this video, do not step on the Lego. Thank you for that helpful advice. Now, our next one is, uh, what is that? Do cows play Little Big Planet? Do cows play Little Big Planet? Yes. 
Um, yes, I, I think they find it's a very moving. So, moving. Uh, moving. <laughs> uh, for, for, the, for the bovine community. Um, You're really milking this for all you can. <laughs> well, how, how dare he? How, how dare he? How dare he? Say oh, stuff oh. like that to me. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> that was terrible. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but we're back on the puns. So, cows do play Little Big Planet. Yes, of course. And, and what levels do they enjoy particularly? Bombs. Uh, bomb, bomb survival yeah. mainly. Probably not they tornado like bomb survival levels. They like any kind of survival levels. Even tornado ones? Yes, but those, those are the favourites. The ones they don't like are the uh, cow tipping levels. Ah, yes. yes. Yeah, I forgot about that. Those can be somewhat offensive to the bovine community. You know, I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, but if you walk out into the pasture, and you like scream and then flop down on the ground, all these cows will come in and circle you. Yeah, I've heard I don't know if that's true or not, mm -hmm. but I've, I've but wanted to try they it. They would almost definitely be playing Little Big Planet if they did. Yes. Exactly. On their Vita. Yes. Which brings us right to our next question. What should I buy? Little Big Planet carding or Little Big Planet Vita? I would go... Oh, this is, this is, this is a tough one. I mean, obviously, if you're going to be on the move a lot, go for the Vita. On the move, really? Move? <laughs> move. <laughs> Come on, give me a little bit of credit. Okay, so... Yes, if you're going to be on the move a lot, go go for the Vita, because it's going to be your best bet. You're going to get more use out of it. Um, you can create on the move, and if you're just going for the original Little Big Planet game, with all, like most of the original features, just go... Go for the Vita. Definitely. Right. Um, if you want, if you prefer racing games, then go for karting. And especially if you're not on the move. Um, also, if you don't have a Vita, go for karting. <laughs> Actually, though, no, uh, karting does have move support. So. Um, so if you're on the move, then. I didn't. I didn't mean the move. Oh, like whatever. That. If okay. you're on the go, if you're on the. If you're on the like, go, like, you get the Vita like, one. Like, like, or if yeah. you're on the John, right? Yeah, if you're on the go. Or, yes, or, or, or on the toilet. Yeah. So, I mean, think about it. You could play Little Big Planet in the bathroom, and I think that is the biggest plus about it. Which I did several times. Did you? Also, also you can play it during lessons, um, and all sorts of things if you're careful. Mm. I did in the beta. Nice. <laughs> So, next or, question. Or you think I say, the beta. The beta. <laughs> Alright, th that's how uh, that's how media molecule guys say it. Yeah, beta. Beta. yeah well, I, I think we also say beta, but I always say beta anyway. Because I'm such a rebel. Wait, is it beta or beta? Well, you can't say it like him. No. Beta. 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 Okay. Because sometimes beta. Uh, British people, they'll put an R on the a -R. any word. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. Did you see what that guy was just pushing just then? No. Oh, it looks like some kind of wafer biscuit. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. It was a cookie. It was a cookie. Yeah, it looks more like a, a wafer biscuit to me. I, I think it was a cookie. Oh, hang on. What are we supposed to do? I, d I don't know. I think ah. we're supposed to go this way. But I want to ride uh, the little thing. Look at all these little birthday so cake men. They look so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did we answer the question? Yes, I think we yeah, did. I think we did, yes. So, did we... Uh, I think we had a question about cake, right? What, ki what kind of um, cake? Oh, yes. Yes, um, cake, cheesecake, or pie? Uh, well, we're, surrounded by, we're surrounded by cake at the moment, so... I would say cake. At, at the risk of offending any of these cakes, um, which are obviously, you know, superior to physical cakes, I would have to go for a chocolate cheesecake. Mm, yes. Mm. Take take the best of best of both worlds. And Austin, you would go with <laughs> that. I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking cake would just really take the cake. Ah, uh, yes. so I would I would yeah. go with the chocolate cheesecake as well. Good, good. All right, our so, next question. So no, no one votes for the pie. No, no, nobody likes. Sorry, pies, pie. you are not loved here. <laughs> our next question is: Is Steve Big Guns a dinosaur? Uh, yes. yes, yes, he is. I can't. He has a yeah. huge head. Yes. Oh no! Wait, wait. <laughs> this is like the opposite of Steve Big Guns because Steve Big Guns has huge arms. Have you seen his guns? Yes. I have. He is the most muscular little big planet player in the world. Is he gonna trophy? I, for I, that? 
I don't have a problem saying that at all. He there could not be anyone more muscular than him he playing this game. Least have a pin for like the most the muscular, biggest guns. The biggest guns. <laughs> Steve Big Guns really does have the biggest guns. Now I can confirm he that uh, so Jeff, you're a he 22. must be a dinosaur because nobody actually has guns that big in real life. Yeah, I, unless they're a dinosaur. I can confirm that Javier 22 is also a dinosaur. He's actually a Triceratops, to be quite accurate with it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know Fine. if any of you guys have seen that video, but we actually have video of him saying that he was a t Triceratops. So. Confess. Oh, we're gonna play Blast Radius. Oh, I love this level. It's a classic. It's a great one. Right then, um... Welcome. Let's see, what happens if you put a drill in a toaster and then put it in the freezer? Mm. Is it still in the toaster while in the freezer, or do you take it out of the toaster and then put it in the freezer? Well, I think we need to answer both, just in case. Okay, um, I would say that you would probably have something happen that would not be a pleasant effect. You reckon? Yeah, I mean, well, think about it. What, what's the purpose of this? Like, were you trying to fix the toaster? Uh, did you do it for fun? Well, obviously, it's to try and preserve it. Oh, okay. Right. So it doesn't. So it's like he he wanted he wanted a toasted drip. Right. Um, a famous snack. Uh, in in their province, obviously. Okay. Okay. Um. But. Uh, after they posted it, they realised they couldn't eat it straight away, so they wanted to put it in the freezer. Right. They, they just want to know what, what would happen if they did this. Well, it depends on how long you leave it in there. Because the whole point, obviously, you want it toasted to begin with. So putting it in the freezer has a reverse effect. So, But it doesn't take away the toast. Do you think it will untoast it if it goes in the freezer? That's a tough one to call. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with, if you put it in the toaster, will make it less toasty, but still be toasty. Yes. So I say, put it in the, put it in the freezer, but only for a few minutes. Take it back out. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm going to go with. Hey, keep it, keep it short. Like, don't, don't leave it in there for too long. No? But, but what happens if it does then? So what, what really happens mm. in the base of this question? I think that, uh, I think that it, it's structure. Just, uh, I, I say it just cools it down. Yeah. It preserves the toastiness. Okay then, so <laughs> that's it. You have preserved your delicious drill treat. Uh, your <laughs> your toasted drill. Um, and you can preserve them for as long as you can, for special occasions. And we hope you enjoy them. Yes. Because there's nothing so, more enjoyable than toasted drills. Exactly, as we all know. But make sure that right. you unplug the toaster before you reach your hand in there and pull it out. Yes. So, um, we have another question here from Mr. Whitby, at the Dirty Designs on Twitter, and he says that his cats hate Sackboy. Uh-oh. And there's a picture of them. The cats have knocked Sackboy over. They've taken him hostage. They've, they've pinned it down. And we don't know what's going... We don't know what's going to happen. We need to know how to stop these cats. Hmm. So, what what is your advice for stopping these cats from... Attacking Sackboy, who does look petrified, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone knows the cats hate two things. One, yes. they hate water, and two, they hate people. Right. So I would so... I would make a person out of water. Okay. And then freeze it, and then throw this massive frozen human sculpture at the cats until they run away. But don't put it in the toaster first. Don't put it in the toaster first, or else it could melt. Exactly. Or but, or you could freeze a cat inside of this human sculpture of a yes. human. And then it would slowly melt around it, causing it to be submerged in water. Or, as we know, cats always run away from humans. Right. So, we could have a human chase it to the nearest sea or river or ocean. Not a river. River wouldn't work for this. Um, but the sea or the ocean. And they force the cat into there. They push it down to the closest shark, and we make the cat um, punch the shark in the face. Hopefully, uh, the cat is scared of of these sharks, right? Um, and has a phobia of water. Um, I'm un I'm unsure why there's sushi flying at us right now, but hopefully, yeah, the cat listened to our advice from earlier in the video, and they are now trying to punch the shark in the face, right? And as we all know, 
um, cats don't have opposable thumbs, they will find it very hard to punch, and the shark will most likely ravage them. Mm. So then the sack boy would be safe. Yes. Um, so that's the end. That's the end of that question. Oh, I got the chicken wing. Oh, that's all like. <laughs> Congratulations. That's all like. Um, have we answered the question about the uh, the cheese? The cheese. No, we have not. No. Well, I think we better because that one needs answering right now. Okay. Are you sure we haven't answered it? I, I know we, we have not answered this one yet. If I say cheese, what would happen five feet away from me? And this is from Vale's view. Well, Vale's view. As we all know, you are never more than five feet from a mouse. And mice also uh, use social networking. They do. So once they hear the word cheese, they will instantly all uh, they put it on uh, mice space and um, right Facebook and and Squeaker. Squeak is a bit like Twitter. Okay. It is. But, but, but for mice. And also Insta cheese. It's kind of like Instagram. They take pictures of their cheese. Yep. Their hipster And mice. then, and obviously after all that's happened, uh, the mice will then attack you. Um, if they hear the word cheese, to try and get to the cheese. As we all know, how is this working? Ah, oh, I can't right, get, get up there. Up. Let's get another block. Maybe it's this one. Okay, so, and then, of course, uh, there's another group of people that do say cheese quite regularly, and that would be yes. photographers. Yes. So, if a photographer says cheese, then smile. Uh, if you say cheese, then you might be replying to the photographer. Um, be careful, though, because if you are around mice, obviously they will ravage you. To try and keep that smile while you know that these uh, mice are going to be ravaging your face in the near future. Right. I think that adequately answers that question. I, I can't think of anything else that would need to be covered, can you? No, I, no. I think, I think no. that covers it all. Good. Um, next question. Have you ever played Minecraft and are you interested by it? Yes and yes. Yes and yes? No and no. The end. Austin says no and no. Why? Uh, just to have a different opinion. He doesn't like creativity. Nope. <laughs> that is why I absolutely despise Little Big Planet. And yep. I'm about to quit right now. Oh no! Yeah. Yep. Where, where are we going? I, I, I don't um, I think I think we messed it up and we just need to quit. Yes. Okay, I, next level. I'm happy with that. Do we have any more questions or is that just about it for the you device know, I, clinic? Um, I think that's all the questions we have for today. All right. Well, I'm glad we're able to all right. give you guys advice. So thank you for visiting the drop-in clinic, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.